What's up, freaks and geeks? Welcome back to Low Res DIY. Well, looks like I'm doing my first product review and sponsored video. So, first things first. Yes, Ugreen did send me this product to review. No money changed hands, anything like that happened. All the opinions, good, bad, or indifferent, that are in this video are mine, mine alone. Uh, they haven't had a chance to edit or change anything. So, now that we got that out of the way, let's have a look here. Let's have a look at the box. First thing you notice, woo, it's, it's nice and shiny. It's a, it's a beautiful looking box, so they're taking care to make sure that you know, you're getting something quality out of it. They sent me the uh, DX4800 Plus uh, version of this, and that is definitely shiny. You look on the back of it here, it shows you a few different things, a few specs, but that right there caught my interest, Docker. So that leads me to believe that there's some space for doing a little uh, DIYing and different things, get uh, different programs working, if you are so inclined. Uh, I've already removed the NAS out of the box, but just to show you, this is the foam it came packaged in. It is thick and sturdy, so chances of your product getting damaged in shipping or anything like that is pretty unlikely. They also had in the box a little box of accessories, and in this box came two Cat7, two Cat7 network drives, uh, a little key here that you can use to lock the hard drives in. Be well, I say lock, but you can really use a screwdriver to get them open. They're not going to secure, it's not going to be secure if somebody wants to, you know, be a thief or whatever. But it will keep you from uh, accidentally ejecting the drives. And I know nobody wants to accidentally eject their drives at any time. So this will help lock that guy in. They also sent a package that had this little screwdriver in it. And it came with multiple screws for throwing in your SSDs or your NVMe drives or whatever you might need them for. And speaking of the NVMe drives, check this guy out. Look at that beefy boy. That's the heat sink for the NVMe drives. It connects directly to the case. A little window here. We'll open it up and have a look at it. But it connects directly to the case. And you can, I don't know if you can hear that. That's aluminum. That's not a piece of plastic or anything. So it will definitely help dissipate the heat from your uh, NVMe drives. And the last thing in the package was this little guy right here. And if we open it up, you can see it has the user's manual in it, multi-language. It's a nice thick manual that gets in there and gives you some pretty good illustrations and tells you what's uh, going on. Again, they, they, they threw some quality at this. They didn't just throw in a little quick start guide with a piece of paper and say, hey, go to this website, check this out to, to get started. They actually took the time for uh, to print a nice thick manual. And then the last thing in that manual was this guy right here. Two-year warranty. You get a two-year warranty when you buy this product. And I say when you buy it because, let's be real, you're looking at this video right now, you're pretty sure you're going to buy it. So one thing I wanted to do before we get too far into the video is I wanted to go to a couple of their websites just to give you the resources you need to to review and see if you really do want this product you know you do so here on this page this is where you can go ahead and buy it uh, if they're doing a Kickstarter right now so right now if you look right there 35 percent off from six ninety nine ninety nine so right there for the same product that i have you can get it for six or for 454 right now great price great deal if you look over here on the uh right side of the screen and you just scroll up and down there are multiple versions you can get multiple different versions depending on your needs and what you want to use it for now like i said this is a kickstarter right now 
there's only 21 days left at the re as of the recording of this video. So if you're thinking about it, uh, I'd pull the trigger. I'd pull the trigger soon. And then this website here, all of these, like I said, they'll be in the description. If you scroll down, it gives you all the information about the different uh, variations of the NAS that they have. And, you know, let's have a look here. Like right here, if you look at the uh, different connections for it, they have multiple different connections for it. Now, this is the best, best of the best that they're showing right here. I'll show you what I have here in a second. It's actually pretty close to what they're showing there. And if you keep scrolling down, there you go. It will show you all the specifications of the different models. And you can make your mind up from there. All right, with that, let's have a let's have a look at the actual product. All right, so like I was saying before, yeah, all well, it's an aluminum housing, very sturdy, very strong. Uh, if you just push on one of these and lift it up, your tray will come out. Now, when it comes to your little key right here, you can take it, slide it in there, give it a little twist. There you go no unintended ejections so we'll put that guy down there and let's pop this one out you can see i already have a hard drive in it and where are we at let's take it out so if you look here let me move this guy out the way also if you look here got a little button right here you just push up on it it slides open take your hard drive place it in and you line it up with the two nubs over here on the side and then you can just close it and there you go it's in it's just that easy so let's put this guy back in there and like I was saying they provided screws and a screwdriver so you can use uh, three and a half inch or two and a half inch drives if you would rather do that totally up to you uh, it has a USB 2 USB-C and an SD card reader on the front of it your power button and your LAN light and then four lights for your disk activity if we flip it over let's do this there we go if we look at it like that something nice there is you got a nice little magnetic screen on it nice big fan back here in the back to keep the unit cool your power hookup right there's your reset button if you ever need to reset it you have a, a 10 gigabit uh, connection and a 2.5 gigabit connection and you have two more USB 2 connections and actually and then there's one USB 3.2 connection and an HDMI cable in case you ever want to hook up to the NAS or hook a monitor up to the NAS that is entirely up to you so oh there we go let's flip this guy down on the bottom here and where is that little screwdriver let's use this guy right here and we're going to take this bottom panel off all right so we open it up and i just had that screw fly away somewhere and you can see right here is our ram our eight gig of ram there's another there's a spot for another stick of RAM in here if you want to put that in. I think you can go up to 64 gigabytes of RAM right now. It's just eight. And let's see if we can get that to focus on that there. Well, let's turn it over so you can read it. Samsung DDR5 so dim. And it's an eight gigabit guy. So it's just like the old school laptops. You just kind of slide it in there. You push it down and these two little prongs, they click it in and it's, it's set in place. Over here you have your connection for your two uh, NVMe D drives if you choose to put them in. It's just a matter of lining everything up, slipping it in, popping her down, and connecting it. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and do that real quick.
one thing that I wish you green would have done because they've done a great job with the hardware they've they've given you some pretty good hardware here instead of having this little screw if you could have had one of those little quick connects disconnects little flippy things that that would have been awesome so I'm not going to put the heat sink on it right now because this is only a, it's a Western digital 250 gigabyte drive I'm not gonna leave it in there uh, this is just I'm just gonna use it for testing purposes and let's see let's cover this guy up screw oh that's why that little screw went flying on me they've got a little spring there that will help you get into the case here so all right i'm gonna screw this down find that other screw when we come back which is going to be like a second for you but for me it's going to be like 20 minutes uh we're going to have this guy hooked up and we're going to find it on my network all right, so as promised, you know, a second for you, 23 minutes for me, but who's counting? So I've got Chrome pulled up here. I've got the NAS back here hooked up to the uh, my network, powered on, ready to go. We're going to go up to the, uh, what do you call that? I guess it's search line or whatever. And we're going to type in find find not thing and you can see I have already uh, done this once or twice so it auto filled for me but find ugnas.com as soon as I hit enter it went out and it found the NAS for me it's just that easy I didn't have to go around fart around getting into uh, different things trying to find the IP address it just it found it there's our IP address there's our MAC address that's all the information right there up front so let's connect to it so we're going to hit connect I'm going to change the device name to low res NAS then we want to give it an administrative account name which of course is going to be low res give it your super secret password and password is not a super secret password so give it your super secret password and click next give it a little time it's gonna get uh, everything hooked up ready to go I'm going to register this guy so I'm gonna blur this out because uh, I don't need you seeing my actual private uh, email address because who knows what you guys will be sending me through the uh, through the email so we'll hit get code it sent it it's going to give us a minute to find it I am going to on the other screen over here go to my email and get that code all right once I have it don't use my code it's not going to work for you once I have that I click next uh, it says it's already registered which yeah it is already registered so we're gonna add the device close this guy down and then it's gonna bring the system update options for you which you can uh, only important updates which is what they recommend automatic install and updates are of you UGOS which is their OS for this NAS and NAS and uh, notify me I'm just gonna leave the only important updates you can check down here at the bottom you can check this if you want to allow them you know you'll send information back on how the the products being uh, used and everything I'm gonna leave that unchecked and then we're gonna click start now and bam here we are we're into our NAS that took a whole what 30 seconds or something like that had I been not farting around and all that first up uh, let's go ahead and look over here on the right side gives you user guide and kind of walks you through the things you need to do to start using the NAS so we got to create a volume all right let's open it up let's start it and let's uh, I've got uh, three two and a half inch drives one three and a quarter and then one uh, NVMe drive or M.2 drive so let's start off let's make a RAID 5 
if you don't know what a RAID 5 is, you can go back to this page here and you scroll up and look at that. They outline what everything does as far as you know your JBOD, your basic, your RAID 0, on down the line. So they put the resources out there for you. I'm going to use these three hard drives right there and we'll scroll down no I don't need to do a test on it yes we're gonna head and use the full 416 because they're using one of the drives as a redundant drive now this is one thing I wish they would allow you to name the drive what you would like to name it but they don't they just give it a storage pool one which you know that's fine uh, format the, the drives yes yeah, so let's go ahead and do it we got to give it our password to allow it to format the drives close that out and you see right there it created the storage pool and it created a volume on it again I wish they'd allow me to give it a storage pool name and volume that I wanted to give it but it's not going to hurt us in any way if I want to add another storage pool I can hit create storage pool and we can go to basic and we're gonna use that hard drive right there we're gonna confirm it it's gonna ask the format password confirm it's gonna go ahead and do it and this time it named it storage pool 2 wish it uh, would give me the option to name it what I want to but it did not so I don't know if you uh, caught that look of puzzlement on my face there but I was wondering why wasn't the uh, M.2 drive showing up and this goes back to using manuals and checking everything out knowing what the heck you're doing if you Caught my mistake earlier, I was putting an SSD drive into an NVMe slot. So I pulled that out, went and took uh, one of my other computers apart, grabbed the NVMe drive out of it, and let's do a basic storage. There it is. So that was my bad, not uh, anything you green did or anything like that, just a mistake I made. So let's go ahead and delete this. And now we have storage pool three. Let's go ahead and create a volume on it. And we'll just stick with the standard stuff. And there you go. Now we have three different storage pools that we can utilize for whatever we want. And let's go ahead and close this out. What's it want us to do next? Basic file operation. So let's go ahead and open that up. And all right, we have shared folders and user folders, which we don't have any of those right now. So we're going to click on the shared folders and we're going to add a shared folder. Let's just call it uh, now lower as test. Here, let's even put a space in there. And let's use volume three because it should be the, the fastest out of them. It's going to give, come up with uh, your permissions to ask what you want to allow. The admin user is me is low res. And it automatically brings up read write permissions for admins. You can click on uh, access prohibited and It'll show you there that you're prohibiting it, but no, nah, we want to go ahead with read and write. So let's hit OK. And you know what? I forgot to do one little step. So let's go to Control Panel, File Services, and we want to enable SM, excuse me, SMB. And this allows the Windows computer to talk to the NAS. So we'll hit Apply. Operation successful. We've got our shared folder created. So let's jump into File Explorer. And if you go down to Networks, look at that. There's our low-res NAS as personal files. And there's our low-res test folder. So it is working. And 
as of right now, you can use it as, as a NAS and just store all your information over there or whatever files you want to store over there. But they have taken it farther and we'll go into the App Center in here, here in a second. But let's see what the actual read write speed of uh, this guy is right now. And mainly we're just kind of testing the, the uh, network speed out more than anything because I don't believe any either of these NVMe drives can uh, saturate a 10 gig network connection. So let's go back into our file explorer and let's find a directory that has, well, hopefully maybe about 10 gig in it. Let's see what we got here. Properties. That guy's got 16. That works for me. So let's do a copy. We'll go down to low res to test. Let's paste it in. 278 megabytes per second, 2.5 gig. And the reason that it's not hitting the full 10 is because this computer that uh, we're recording this on, it only has a 2.5 gig, uh, gig NIC in it. So once this gets done, I mean, that thing's, that's flying, that's awesome. Once this finishes, we're going to do a uh, iperf test and see if it's really able to do the full 10 gig 16 gig and that that was what 90 seconds or so that that's quick that that is definitely quick it didn't have a problem keeping up with it or anything like that so like i said i don't have a two point or i don't have a 10 gig in in the uh system here so we're going to jump over to my Proxmox machine, which does have a 10 gig NIC in it. And we're going to go to my Plex. And I'm going to use this container to run the iPerf test on. But first, one second. So one thing that you Green asked me to do was not show hooking up... Uh, well, basically digging into their OS. You know, I did it on my own. I installed iPerf 3 on the NAS, and I have it running right now. So if we go back to our Plex server, and I run iPerf 3 as the client, and I hit Enter, we're going to see, look at that. We're getting 999, nine, nine, darn near the full 10 gig that uh, we should be getting. If we look over here at the server, Proxmox uh, container, you can see that we got it there also. So this NAS is fully capable of what they claim it will do just as just as a point to to prove that it's going through the true nas server see that right there the ip address 10.10.10.9 if we go to this guy right here you can see right there putty is connected to 10.10.10.9 so, uh, yeah, fully capable of saturating a 10 gig network. One other thing, let's uh, look at the apps here. Now, there aren't a ton of apps yet, but they are working on them. One thing I noticed was the Docker. I haven't played with it a lot yet, so I don't feel comfortable, you know, trying to explain how to utilize it and everything. I do know that the there are instructions out there for it. Uh, matter of fact, you Green has sent me some instructions. I just haven't had the time to get into it. But the one thing I do want to point out is the Photos app because my wife, she's a Shutterbug, and her phone's continually full of pictures, things like that and she has difficulty finding them. Well, 
I put the app on her phone and showed her this this photo app and and she fell in love immediately because it allowed her to find things a lot quicker so let's just go ahead and click install we're gonna put it on our volume 3 and you can click on this always install apps in, in you know in that volume that's up to you I'm not gonna click on it and we're just gonna let it install and right down here it tells us to enable personal media library go to control panel user management and edit so control panel user management and we want to edit our user if you go down here enable personal folders storage pull 3 confirm save let's go back to this and there's our photos now so we're ready to go a little confusing but not like I say they're they're still in beta and they're 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 working on these apps and this one though I know it it works great so let's go back to the photo app we'll close this out and let's uh, close that out and let's open it back up now it wants us to add some photos I can go anywhere on my computer and add photos and it just so happens I have a directory ready for that and we'll just uh, shift and pick all these guys and we'll click open we're gonna skip it you can remember your choices right there if you want yeah I'm gonna do it individually as we go so file upload ready up to 16 files up here in the corner this is kinda nice you get your transfer speeds, everything else going on right up there. And then it also gives you your CPU usage and your RAM usage. So we're just going to let this uh, cook for a little bit, get everything downloaded. It's going to take a little longer because of all the individual files. It's not like one large file. It's small individual files take the most amount of time. So you see I'm switching back and forth here. One thing that it's doing well one thing I do want to point out is when the CPU got up to 50% I, I felt a breeze over here on the side of my face I put my hand over here that fan is cooling this like crazy it's plenty of air coming out of there uh, but what it's doing it's going through the files that we just put in here and it's scrubbing them because it's looking for videos it's looking for places it's looking for people as in their their faces it can recognize them and everything and it's just throwing out the most recent one if we click on people and it hasn't got that far yet places you can scroll out and go you can zoom in and for the pictures it will show you where in the world you put or took not put took those pictures if we go back if we give it enough time to cook it's gonna start throwing faces up there matter of fact let's give it time to cook well pretty much as soon as I stopped recording it threw some faces up there so let's go ahead and we're gonna click on them and the first one there you see is me the second one is my wife and if you click right here where it says who is this you can click on it and give them a name so there's wit dog and here's low res now when you click into it right now it's having a little difficulty pulling the pictures up of the faces if we click on it it's just a black screen right now but from experience trust me it will eventually start populating all of that so because even right here it's not showing the full full scene yet like I said from experience it will start populating everything in this so final conclusions this is a NAS it's being sold as a NAS that's its main purpose as, as network attached storage as a NAS the hardware is amazing it's great hardware for that um, the software for utilizing it as a NAS 
is great. It's easy. It's very intuitive. It took, I don't know, five minutes to get everything up and running to utilize it as an actual NAS. Now, some people are going to complain that the apps are not fully ready for showtime. And for the most part, they're right about that. But the apps and everything else, if you're buying a NAS for the apps, you're buying it for the wrong reason. You're, you're buying it to utilize it as backup storage and everything else. And Ugreen did a great job of that. Their apps, their extra stuff, the, the bonus material, they'll get it figured out. With as much as they put in the hardware and, and all that, no doubt in my mind they will get it figured out and all the apps will be working eventually again this is still in kickstarter stage so heck tomorrow they might throw out a update that solves all the issues with these uh with the little apps but like i said you're buying a nas you're not necessarily buying uh an entertainment system or something like that so with that check you later